What's going on everybody? This is Josh here with Zero Gravity and I got some great stuff to go over with you today. First, I wanted to congratulate all of the bulls. As you know, today we initially opened, we had a huge red bar pushing all the way down to 2143. We ended up doing over 2 million in volume and pushing this thing green for the time, for the first five minute candle of the day. This thing continued higher all the way up to 2259. And as you see, we're currently consolidating again, and I'm expecting moves higher and higher and higher. Now, like I said, I got a lot of great content for you today. So please stay tuned, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. First thing is yesterday, Kathy Wood picked up an additional 1.1 million shares for her Art K fund. And as you all know, we love and adore Kathy. She's one of our strongest supporters and she's one of our only supporters when it comes to Palantir. And that's a lot of what I wanna get into today is why I think she has a strong focus towards it and why it seems everybody else doesn't. Now getting started, like I said, we had a huge push up today. We broke through 22 and we ended up hitting 22.59 and we've been kind of consolidating throughout the rest of the day there. But this got me so excited. I was almost ready to post one of those O-Face thumbnails. But one of the big things I wanted to go over real fast, just my thoughts and theories. Uh, so as they say, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this is my opinion. This is not financial advice. Uh, Zach's came out yesterday with his article on Palantir and of course they kind of beat it down. And it's almost to be expected every time Kathy, you know, purchases more, they come out with some more negative articles or whatever the case is. But this one here, it says in terms of valuation, Palantir is currently trading at a forward PE ratio of 128.4. This represents a premium compared to its industry average PE of 31.39, indicating that Palantir could still see a 50% drop in its actual stock pricing right now, which absolutely kind of blows my mind and shocks me. So of course I've got to get investigating. I got to start doing my own research, you know, trying to figure out like, oh my gosh, I can lose 50% of my Palantir. So I just want to kind of compare it real quick to a few other uh, guys out there. So when we look at Palantir, you will see the Ford P of the 10322 here, uh, which, you know, kind of deems them correct as far as that goes. And as you can see, we've had, you know, nothing recently posted on here, but we've had a whole lot of, you know, downgrades and stuff over the past, a uh, few months and stuff like that. And it's kind of definitely cast kind of a negative light on Palantir as far as that goes, looking from the you know financial institution side of it. We only have 18% institutional ownership in this. So that means pretty much this is the people's stock as, as far as that goes. So I wanted to kind of compare it to a few other, you know, high, um, high growth, high expectation stocks that are kind of in the similar fields, uh, kind of similar age or something like that. So one of my often see compared with is CrowdStrike. So jumping in CrowdStrike here, we look at there for, holy cow, 329.51 for All right, so that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense there, does it? You know, that if that's the case, then that would give Palantir, you know, a 3X potential, which is absolutely insane, you know? So based on that information, you would, you would think that, you know, this thing's gotta have just bukus of downgrades. Let's see what they're doing. Uh, Turn from hold to buy, sell to buy, buy, hold, neutral, uh, 225, 280, 260. What are we at right now? 209. Holy cow. These guys are giving this thing five, six X potential here. That's that's crazy. Uh, well, of course, that could be maybe a one off or, or something weird going on there. So let's check out another one that's often commonly compared with Palantir uh, Splunk. Let's check it out. It's currently trading at 132. Holy smokies, 609.91 forward PE. That's a, that gives Palantir a 6x potential. This is absolutely insanity here. So let's see what their, their price targets over here are. It, it is definitely getting some downgrades here, which is kind of good. You know, 250, 175, 235, 160, you know, 200. Let's see what is 132. What the, what is going on here? These downgrades were of course why it was higher. They haven't did anything recently here, but these are still some huge, huge numbers and expectations. 240, 240 coming from Robert W. Baird. What? Anyways, that is absolutely insanity. It seems like, you know, if, if Zach's is saying that Palantir could lose 50% because it's currently at 100, then what do you think these guys could currently lose? This could be a, you know, $15 stock before the end of the month based on Zach's expectations. So maybe there's something else I'm missing here. Let's go back and take a look again. So it's got a 40.89 billion market cap. What is this? 45, all right, all right, CrowdStrike's actually got a bigger market cap. And then it's got a half a part, 
half of the market cap Splunk does. So it's a, definitely a, a smaller stock there as well. All right, so what else? We got 18.7% institutional owned. Let's see what this one is. Oh, 74%, almost 75% is owned by the institutions. That's, that's kind of crazy. Let's check out Splunk. 94.8% institutional ownership. This is absolutely insanity. And this almost leads me back to my original thought process when I, when I, if you looked at and watched a couple of my older videos, uh, Palantir went through the DPO route and I feel like it offended a lot of the institutions. It's kind of like Palantir didn't pay their, their uh, stock market tax, so to say. A lot of times institutions like to buy in early, tax the retail consumer, and I feel like Palantir didn't afford that same opportunity to a lot of those institutions, which made them a lot of uh, salty, I guess would be the word. Salty is what they are. Um, but anyways, this is absolutely insanity here. And now we're saying that this one is overpriced because it's 103. And then we can take a look at just something silly here. Let's look at Doge. Doge, for example, has a 40 billion market cap based on an inflationary cryptocurrency because it's the people's coin, right? So what is stopping Palantir from being a $300 stock right now? I feel like if we had the investors from, you know, the AMC, the GME, all those guys, you take a look at it, Palantir has huge, huge potential. Uh, it's growing each and every day. It's one of the most hype stocks out there. They come out with new contracts weekly, and these aren't small contracts. The smallest contracts you're gonna see are a million dollars plus. These are absolutely huge and insane contracts they're signing. They have government backing, government funding, everything else involved, and I do not understand how this stock is here. The only thing I can see is there's some institutions either upset or angry at us or doing something to help push us down or, or frustrate the market. You know, there's been multiple times where uh, Alex Carp himself has came out, took a stand against Silicon Valley, took a stand against hedge funds. He stood up for the retail investor time and time again. And I honestly think that, you know, we should show him our support. And I pledge that I'm going to continue to buy this stock for the next, you know, months and months and months until I feel that it is near an appropriate level or an evaluation based on the expectations from this company. I know he, he announced some, you know, 30%, 35% expectations, stuff like that. We can, I can pull up the chart here and show you that we have blown all, every expectation out of the water so far and i think he continues to plan to do that and i think he enjoys doing that and i think that's how he builds faith and confidence in his retail investors and i just want to keep seeing where it goes um i know some of this is a little bit of a little bit of conspiracy theory on my part for sure but honestly take a look at this 94.8 institutional owned and this thing's getting a 240 dollar uh rating come on guys 132 and it's already at a 600 PE. That is because institutions own it and they want to make money off of you, the retail investor. So I think it's time we take a stand and we make that institutional investor pay us some profit, pay us some tax. Let's take this to the moon and have them chasing in FOMO. Appreciate it very much, you guys. I'll see you next time.